questions today. Well, you know, playing at home, and I think that they're clearly playing with confidence, as you and I talked to Coach uh, Tom Green today. I expect them to come out and, and take advantage a little bit more of Cody Zeller on the inside. Didn't see much of that to the second half, so let's see if that happens. On the other hand, what you've got to see is some terrific shooting and very few turnovers on the part of Chattanooga to have success. Cody Zeller had three steals in the opening win Friday night against Stony Brook, and now Chattanooga comes back the other way. They have four senior starters. Keegan Bell is their point guard. He wears number three, and Chattanooga turns it over, so Indiana will have it. That's their second turnover against the Chattanooga Mocs. They're 16 and 16 a year ago. They won the North Division of the Southern Conference, and we talked to John Schulman as well. He's pretty confident he has a pretty good basketball team this year. No, he thinks he is a team that can, can really get a lot of things done. What they're, they're going to find different is with Indiana. Indiana does some things like one. Halls really didn't shoot the ball much in the, in the game the other day on Friday. The other thing is Indiana runs more this year and they can run and they have the depth to replace people when they get tired. That's what's very different about Indiana this year. Jordan Hole shot 41% from three-point range a year ago. Did not make a three on Friday night. Keegan Bell's first try no good. That ball's knocked out of bounds and goes to Indiana. But Tom Green's team, an outstanding night Friday night. They shot 65% from the field, 70% in the second half. When you saw him hit 7 of 14 from three-point range without holes making a shot from behind the arc. Well, uh, yes, he didn't make a shot. And the fact that you only shoot 14 uh, three-point shots and you get eight, 88 points, I think that says something about the efficiency that Indiana had in that game. Shot it very well, as you've already noted. Shot clock. At 16, as Holes has it out front. Jones with a foot on the arc. And a holding foul called against the box. Tom Crean in his fourth year at Indiana. Just 28 and 66, 8 and 46 in the Big Ten. But again, things on the upswing with what they think will be a much better year and the number two recruiting class in the nation coming in in 2012. Missed by Watford, got his own rebound, the basket and the foul. Well, he was able to break free, first of all, and, and couldn't finish. Got a lot more athletic ability, I think, in this contest than in the game on Friday, but again, Watford misses the first one, quick off his feet to get the rebound, puts it back up strong, got tapped on the right arm. Christian Wofford averaged 16 points per game a year ago. He had just seven points on Friday night. But again, Tom Crean with a 30-point win over Stony Brook used all 16 players available. And he misses the free throw. 5-0 here early, Indiana. The one thing, Quinn, that John Schulman talked to us today, he trusts his basketball team, and he even said, if we get down 10 nothing, I think we've got veterans that can get back in it. Well, that's what he doesn't want him to do. He just doesn't want his team to panic, you know, when they don't make shots like that one. Keegan Bell misses that shot, but they, if they panic, if they don't make two or three in a row. Watford's three no good. And Slovaric with the rebound. A redshirt junior out of Serbia started his career at Georgia. They've got... Four players, including uh, Hill, that knocked down, I'm sorry, that, that are transferred. Slavaric is transferred, and they've also got Mason transferred. But they've got four, I mean, when I'm talking about transfer, even Mason is a former football player that they have on the team. Georgetown, uh, and, and so you've got some guys who've been in big-time programs, and that's what Coach Schulman think may help his guys stay patient. And that was one of those with Todd, who hit the three, started his career two years at Georgetown for the Hoyas. So Chattanooga's on the board, and here's Holes missing. And Slovaric has the rebound. Well, he's looking for the shot this time, there's Holes. Indiana shot 35% a year ago from behind the arc, averaging six made per game. I don't think that Indiana's gonna, gonna have to do quite as much of that, or I think the shot will be a little bit better, because when you look at the fact that you've got a big man in the post, you can throw it in, and, and you may be able to get him to kick it back to you, so you got a wide open shot. That'll be different. Shot clock inside 10. Watad just hit the three, now a deep three. <laughs> I mean, a deep three. You can see this team plays with confidence. On many ballots, he is the preseason player of the year in the Southern Conference. Omar Watah, out of Johnson City, Tennessee. Down low to 
Cody Zeller hit the side of the backboard. That's really the first time we've seen him get the ball in the post. Well, he hasn't gotten it much in the post, but I'm telling you, this, this tempo, this is an adjustment from Indiana, and I know it particularly because they haven't done the last game. It's a faster game, and this is a much more physical team. Slovaric has the rebound. He has it knocked away. Taylor with it. They've got a brand new shot clock. Slovaric steps out, and Watford has the rebound. Chattanooga a year ago averaged 71 points per game, and John Shulman thought they played a little bit too fast. He wants to play fast, but take better shots as Oladipo hits the three from the corner. Not normally a strength of his, his quickness is, is his strength, but he able to knock down that shot. And again, on, on the post on that side was Cody Zeller, so you're going to be able to get a free shot. Banking in Slovaric. Game is tied at eight for Oladipo. He made just eight threes a year ago. That's his first of the year. You notice with Indiana, they're trying to push the ball up, but Chad Miller's done a good job. On May baskets, they put the four man on the ball and they slow things down. So you know you got some things positive there. The intensity from Indiana, having come off a big victory on Friday, you've got to maintain that. For the Mox, their three-point efficiency. In the last contest, they played against Tennessee Wesley, and they were 16 of 22 by the guards alone. They've got to knock that down, and then they've got to contain Indiana's backcourt and, and don't let them get to the rim. Well, good start for Omar Watad. He has eight points, a couple of threes and a two, and we're tied at 10. The Hoosiers and the Mox here on BTN. Jones, Zeller, Oladipo holes. And Will Sheehy is on now. He has the ball. Sheehy, a sophomore out of Stewart, Florida. He had 13 points and five rebounds in the win Friday night against Stony Brook. Okay, we talked a bit, little bit about what you have to keep it in front of. If you notice on that particular possession early, Chattanooga went to a zone because this is what they don't want to have happen is Oladipo get to the rim because he, uh, Oladipo and Sheehy, can, can make those kind of plays. And Quinn, those two guys have shown the most improvement on this team oh. from their freshman to sophomore year. Well, yeah, they, they, well, they're older one, and I think their bodies are better. That is Z Mason, the former Division I football player at Ole Miss, and now Burroughs picks up a loose ball and gets the hoop. Well, he got a nice pass from Bell, who anticipated the pass going to Jordy Halls, because every time Indiana's taking the ball out, they've thrown it to what effectively is, the, as we're looking at it, the left corner. Bell anticipated it and got a steal. That was Indiana's first turnover, as Verdell Jones has it. The Mox have the lead, Sheehy for three, and the long rebound out to Knoxville freshman Rico White. One of the Hoosier Invitational. Chattanooga will head to Indianapolis and play at Butler on Tuesday. Savannah State and Gardner Webb are also a part of the Hoosier Invitational. It will end with Indiana and Butler meeting here at the Assembly Hall in late November. Cody Zeller has returned. Slovaric with a nice hook. Well, you can see the one thing about Slovaric. It's though he's not quite as tall as Cody Zeller. He's, he's not, he doesn't have any feel. So he made body contact, clear uh, Zeller, and then was able to get the shot off. Oladipo, Moore, Watford, Zeller, and Remy Abel on the floor for Indiana. Watford out of the double team. That's a really good save there, because Watford had thrown that away. Zeller gets the loose ball. Oladipo, nice pass, but an offensive foul. Charge taking that time by early, but it's the right idea by Oladipo, but you got to give the good, solid defensive play. Good pass out. And you can see the defense is standing. Oh, boy. Yeah, the defense is standing there, and there's contact, and the official makes the call. But the real key, again, we'll watch it all night, is the brand-new three-foot restricted arc underneath the basket the first year in college basketball. So we'll watch that. Clearly, the defender was outside the arc. As Keegan Bell back out there, Slovaric walks. Fourth turnover. Yeah. This is the arc, and the essence of that arc is if the defensive player is outside the arc, 
and there's contact, then it's clearly a charge. If his foot is on or he's in that arc, they generally will not call it, they will call it a block. Now, that, that's not absolute, but that is to give the officials a much better feel for one of the most difficult plays in basketball. And that's not difficult for Jordan Holes, his second. And Tom Crean told us after shoot around today, they have to find ways for Holes to get shots. He's such a good shooter as White throws it away. That's the fifth Chattanooga turnover. Yeah, he did. He said he had to get whole shots. He only took, uh, I believe, three for the entire game the other night. But I, I think a lot of it was predicated on we've got Cody Zeller here. Let's try to get him into the game. Now, I didn't think, uh, watching the game, I actually thought Stony Brook did a good job of not allowing Zeller to get it. And Indiana has got to work to improve their ability to throw the ball into the post. Tied at 18, inside 10 minutes to play. First half in Bloomington. A doubleheader Sunday night here on BTN. We'll head to Evanston later tonight for Northwestern and Texas Pan American. Now they double Zeller again. Well, he's a good pass out of the post. See, that, that's the thing that's a little deceptive. And he did made a really good pass uh, on Friday where he threw it across court. Here, he anticipates the baseline, and he's going to make a pass because he sees Watford has a chance to come, and then you just see... Uh, as the pass gets there early, gets there late. And for Chris Early, that's his second personal foul, so the 6'7", 235-pound senior has to sit down. And that brings back uh, the former footballer out of Nashville, Tennessee, Z. Mason has returned. Sounds like a football name for It sure. does sound Z. like a football Mason. name. A little bit of a zone on the out-of-bounds, kind of a 1-3-1 one, one foul in the corner and they're going to call Zeller for being a little aggressive. They said he cleared out. And Zeller picks up the offensive foul. That's an Indiana turnover. Ah. Uh, I like officials. <laughs> I like officials. Ray Perrone, Pat Driscoll, and Chris Beaver are officials tonight here at the Assembly Hall in Bloomington. That's Bell. Great anticipation there by Zeller. Holes. I think Tom Green might want Holes to pull up and shoot that three. Well, it, particularly in that break situation, because one of the advantages that Tom Green has is to Zeller can get out and run, and he was underneath. So you you got a almost a 45-50% shooter from the three-point line shooting it, and you got Zeller under the basket to get the rebound should he miss it. Walker got up in the air. Indiana has its five starters on the floor. They lob it inside to Zeller, but too tall from Jones. Well, that's just an example of how, how they've got to learn how to enter the ball in the post, because there really was no angle there. Mason nearly had it picked. I, the one thing that is, if you watch Indiana, that, that you know, Tom Green has talked about is deflections. And you see these the, his players a lot more active with their hands. Mason in the lane, jump shot no good. Zeller has the rebound. Ahead to Oladipo. Oh, boy. <laughs> that three is off. It's missed by Ricky Taylor. Here come the Hoosiers again. Carry the ball. Uh, they call it, they'll call it double dribble. That's a discontinued dribble that Jones had there. So Verdell Jones turns it over. That's five turnovers for Indiana. Now watch him. He's going to act like it. And he basically, that ball touched his other hand as he was moving it from his left to the right. And it touched the other hand before it went down. And so that's basically a double dribble. Tom Green will go deeper into his bench. You saw Will Sheehy get off the bench. He played just 10 minutes on Friday, had flu-like symptom, uh, symptoms, had 13 points and five rebounds off the bench. And also Matt Roth has come in, 6'3", senior out of Washington, Illinois. A good perimeter shooter. He's out there with Jones in the backcourt. Sheehy's he's got an interesting position because he's got to play against Bur Burroughs, and, and Sheehy's really not, not that kind of a defender. Well, Todd, another three. He has hit a couple from deep. <laughs> deep. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that is his third. Well, I'm telling you, he shot that deep and was challenged by Oladipo. He's got 11 points, the first player on either team to reach double figures. In fact, Latat has 11 of their 21. 
And Oladipo down there, out of a double team, is fouled on BTN. QB, it is that time of the year, isn't it? It's hoop season. It is hoop season. And, you know, it, it's good to be here. College basketball, watching these young men grow and mature, having seen Indiana last year, and watch some of these guys, their status this year. Uh, first look at, at Chad Nugo, but uh, I have to tell you, th they're going to be someone to reckon with over in the Southern Conference. What Todd is, is a challenge, and I think they've got some presence on the inside as well. Well, the depot has seven. Indiana's within one. It's going to be a great year for the Big Ten. I was in Columbus on mm -hmm. Friday night and saw Thad Mata's Ohio State Buckeyes open the season with a 31-point win over Wright State. Jared Sullinger, fought by many, the preseason player of the year, not just in the Big Ten, but in the country. Yeah, he, you know, he's got it going on. You know, Wisconsin has got some things going there. Bo Ryan always has a solid club there. So the Big Ten is, again, going to be a factor. And what about Michigan State? They're picked among the top three in the Big Ten. They open the season with North Carolina. They've got Duke coming up. They like to get the challenges in early. And, I, you know, knowing uh, Coach Tom Izzo, what he does is, is that gives him a real opportunity to coach his young players when you play against these really good teams because now he can just refer to the game and say, hey, remember when we played against Duke or North Carolina? Remember when this happened? This is what the best teams are able to do. Seventh turnover against Chattanooga. Ooh. Hoosiers get a break on that. Because clearly that ball got knocked off of, uh, I thought it was Will Sheehy. Indiana has a chance to regain the lead. Chattanooga by one, 6.42 to play, first half. From Bloomington, Sheehy shot no good. And the Mox have the rebound. See, the one thing that Indiana didn't have to face, this team, as you talked about, is a little older and a little stronger, but they can chase down those balls. Mason step back jumper. Good block oh, yeah, out. No question. No question. Burroughs threw him right down. <laughs> then got him right over and picked him up. He threw all the depot down. And he was maybe able to see it on the left side, the side of the screen. See Burroughs just throw him down and he rushes right there. Picks him up because all the depot had blocked him out. Jamal Burroughs, the foul, senior out of New Orleans. So here's the other thing that that the, the Indiana fans can expect. Cody Zeller is actually playing on 48 hours, playing at a higher level of competition than he did last season. And when we talked to Coach Tom Crean today, one of the things he talked about was trying to figure out how to conserve him, but but challenge him at the same time, because he's you know he's going to get moved around a lot more than he did in high school, because nobody was strong enough in high school to move him. In college, it takes a lot of energy to move a man of that size, but it also wears the man out, and then he wants Zeller to make sure he has some strength throughout the course of the season. And so Tom Green turns to one of the most veteran players on this roster, Tom Pritchard, 6'9", senior out of Westlake, Ohio, and a young man whose role has changed over the years. He was counted on as a starter early on. He'll be a reserve now. Yeah, he'll, he'll definitely be a reserve. And he's trying to find, Tom Green is just trying to find exactly what's the, the, the proper role for Pritchard, because he was playing a lot of minutes at the center spot uh, last year, but that's not going to be the case now. There's a deflection by Oladipo. Again, Indiana's had its hands on the ball a lot. Chattanooga shooting 45% from the field. Indiana at just 35%. Nice pass inside Great from Orange. Oladipo got that and helped out of the corner. Otherwise, that's a layup. I mean, anticipation. You see guarding with Todd, and I watched the quick play just to get to the center, and that's the reason the travel is called. Lars just couldn't handle the ball. Oladipo in the post. They'll double him. Sheehy baseline jumper. So he shoots an easy jump shot. And he's starting to play under control. First points for Will Sheehy, averaged five a game a year ago. 13 and five Friday night in game one, and that's Oladipo again. They got his hand on the ball, knocked out by Chattanooga. Now this was the play, this is the same play that happened on the other end for Indiana, the official, but the official is saying that Oladipo hit it, and Watah touched it last, the official missed the call. 
because the ball clearly hits Oladipo and then it hits the official. And, and you know, with officials, and, and this is just the reality, that ball's coming at him so fast, I, he probably pulls his eyes. And now with Todd called for the foul. That, that was the battle I was talking to, some of our, uh, you and, and others here, that you wanted to keep a battle an eye on, because these two were going to battle. And this is the strength of Oladipo is to get to the rim. Omar Wittad, all Southern Conference a year ago. Again, they won the North Division. They were 16 and 16. 76, 81 and 87 under Bob Knight. And Mike Krzyzewski has a chance to pass his mentor this week when Duke plays Michigan State. It's more a matter of than win than if, but uh, the two names, obviously, it's, it's special. I mean, it's been interesting because Mike Krzyzewski was a grad assistant here at Indiana uh, on the team that I was on as a junior. And I'm, I'm happy for Mike and Mickey Krzyzewski, Krzyzewski and the entire family because they do it as a family affair. Um, but uh, no two better people from a coaching standpoint that I could think of being up there. Jordan Holes now has three threes. Slovarich missed, and that's Watford who has returned. Jones attacks, finds more, and Holes again for his fourth three. Now he's got three, but he pushed the ball and up initially. But the big part of the reason it happens was because Cody Zeller, his strength is getting they do, but the play was made. I'm telling you, Holes makes the shot, but Zeller makes the play because the defense had to collapse on him because he got down the court so fast. Indiana just inside 50% from the field, but they're 50% from three-point range. They're 5 of 10, and here's Jones with the steal. Oh, no. Now the pushing foul, that's Slovaric. Tried to ensure that this wasn't again another steal. They're, they're questioning whether or not this is a flagrant one because they think it was. It, the, the question was, what was he trying to do? I mean, did he stumble and fall? And it looks like they're going to go look at it. Handing it to John Schumann. And the one issue for those watching college basketball, the language has changed. That's always been called an intentional foul in the past, but. Intentional now is not a part of the language. It's flagrant one, flagrant two. Yeah, the, the question to me, yeah, it's a change in nomenclature, but the reality is that's what it is. They don't, it's a non basketball play. I mean, because you can see, he'll grab him on the arm, so he's got him, and then he moves him, and once he starts to go in the air, that's where it gets a little bit scary, and I think that's what got the officials' attention. Less than two minutes to play, and Indiana, after leading just 25-24, has opened it up. You got Paul's knocking down three-point shots. That helps. 11-0 run by the Hoosiers. Jordan Holes has four threes. He's out at the top of the key. And he does not need much room. Here's Jones inside, and that's an offensive foul. Yeah, if you stand out there, that long with the basketball and then start to drive as, as Jones did. All the defense sees it. You can see what Todd gets there. And there's contact and the shot is still going up. But everybody sees you. The defense is watching you. Be sure to stay tuned at halftime for the State Farm Halftime Report. We'll keep it here in Bloomington at the Assembly Hall. Quinn and I will have first half highlights. We'll have the stats. And QB will chat with Calvert Cheney, the all-time leading scorer here in Indiana and in the Big Ten. Bell tried to make a quick move to the rim and just lost the ball. But the defense was in a position to help, and Bell would not have gotten all the way to the front of the rim. 13 turnovers now for Chattanooga. I think, if, if anything, Quinn, Tom Crean has to be happy with the way the Hoosiers have pressured the ball. Well, he wants the pressure, and they have pressured it very well. And, and Chattanooga has turned it over, some of it with pressure, some of it without. That was intended for Elston. And that's the seventh for Indiana. Taylor has returned. Now Watai misses the three. He had made three of them earlier. He has 11 of their 24 points. 45 seconds to play as we count down the first half here in Bloomington. And watch see if they get a, a, a screen down, I, I mean screen at the top instead of doing that. Yeah, this is what they really want to get to now. What, what else has to happen eventually is they've got to throw it back. 
He was well, wide open. Look to him, that maybe too wide open. I was going to say screen and roll back to Zeller. I think he missed him. I think Holtz was ready to shoot before he got it the second time. That's Taylor missing everything. And now Daniel Moore. I think he thought he was fouled, but it's Chattanooga ball. Well, I'm sure the fans thought he was fouled. Now the shot goes, and we'll get a chance to take a look at it from here. He touched it last, but they, they're basically going to give the ball to Indiana. Yeah, they have changed the call. Yeah. They, they changed the call, but he did, but definitely more touched it last, and I think a little bit because of the contact. Chattanooga just two of its last ten from the field. And Indiana will be at the brand new Ford Center in Evansville. Six seconds to play. Watford missed it at the buzzer. As they have a 12 point lead over the Chattanooga Mox here on BTN. Kristen Airy and Quinn Buckner with you. The front half of our BTN doubleheader will head to Evanston for Northwestern and Texas Pan American coming up in about an hour or so. Chattanooga had 13 turnovers in the first half. They have the ball to start. Zeller blocked the shot. Early's down there in trouble. And the change of possession gives the basketball to Indiana. That's what I've been most impressed with when the play of Cody Zeller. You look at the numbers the other night. He had three steals and two blocks. He's always around the ball. He affects the game. He, he, you know, his size affects it. He has some good quickness right around the ball and right around the rim. Maybe not the kind of uh, quickness you see in a, an open court situation, but he has great great speed for his guy, uh, a guy of his size. Now, remember, in the first half, they didn't look for him very much in the game on Friday. Let's see if they're a little more, uh, look for him a little more here in the second half. Yeah, he had just two first half points. Took just two shots. Bad pass by Watford. Blue read there by Bell. Well, it is, but it's also part of what Watford is, is dealing with. For a long time here, for, for a while while he was here, everybody had to play with him. Now he's got to play with everybody else, which means there are times when he's going to have to kick it out and trust his teammates and read defenses a little bit better. He doesn't. He might have been unable to force that shot before. He can't force it now. Jordy Hall's is not forcing him, and he's knocking down threes. Five of seven from three-point range for Jordan Holes, Mr. Basketball from Bloomington South High School. Well, Todd has it blocked. That was Oladipo that got a piece of it. And now Taylor from the corner hits the three. First basket for 13 Mox turnovers. And Jordan Holes leads Indiana in scoring. He has 15 all on five three-point field goals. And the difference at half was really about 12 points. But if you looked at it, it became the free throws where there were eight more made by the mock, uh, by the uh, Hoosiers. In addition to that, there was one additional three made by the Hoosiers, and that was a 12-point game. So that's, it's 11 of those 12 there, and Cody Zeller goes and shows the other side of his game, a deflection by Jones. And now they run. They've got a four on two. It's Oladipo underneath and draws the foul. Looking to do, as we talked to Tom Crean today, what he talked about with his team was looking to do more out of their defense. Their defense had to be solid, get deflections, and then from there, can you turn it? Turn it over, get it to the other end before the defense can set up. Well, the one thing about Indiana, they play a Stony Brook team that is thought to be one of the better teams in their conference. They beat them by 30 on Friday night, and now tonight against a veteran Chattanooga team, though it's interesting to see they start four returning senior starters, and then really the rest of their team is newcomers, but really Bell and Taylor, the backcourt for Chattanooga, have not been effective tonight for the Mox. And, and it's been, you know, as Bell go, typically the team goes. With Taylor, uh, he just comes off a game. He had 17 points on, five, you know, five of uh, seven threes, and he's not able to get himself going in this game, so they need him to go, but but Bell is the one guy that they felt like could, could get some things going positively and make shots, and he really hasn't. They've got Jones with some size guarding him. That's what Todd missing. Zeller lost the ball, but that's Holes with it. Alley-oop, and Oladipo throws it down. Got it going all the way. Again, when Zeller runs, the defense tended to stay closer to him as opposed to flatten out. Leaving all the deep ball on the baseline for the strong finish. And a game high 17 point Indiana lead. As the Hoosiers start to open it up here at the assembly hall. 
Bell gets inside. Blocked by Jones. And then Oladipo runs into Zeller. Bell had some help there. The ball now with the Mox. It's a pretty solid defense. You see Zeller's running, and, and it holds the defense up over the top is Oladipo. Just one basket in the half for Chattanooga. They went 6-33 without a basket from the end of the first half to the start of the second. And it's a 17-point Indiana lead. Oladipo and Holes each have 15. That's Jones knocking it away. Holes ahead with a great pass. Was able to pass it between with the defender trying to get back into it and was able to del deliver it where it needed to be. This is what John Schumann was afraid of, remember? Even though he's got a veteran team where they're going to come down and break down in terms of their patience, and they've done that in terms of turning it over by trying to rush to get places that there really is no opening. And an offensive foul, illegal screen called on early. That's the second time he's, he's given a good one. He gave one earlier to Oladipo. Well, you told me you saw it on Friday night against Stony Brook. This Indiana team will run more in 2011-2012. Looking to get out and run. Jones is the beneficiary of a pretty good pass that time from Jordan Halls with the left hand. And again, when you can do it off a live turnover, you're usually going to have numbers. And we've seen Indiana win here in the second half with a lot of four-on-twos, three-on-twos, even a five-on-two. They have been very aggressive, Chris. They, they really have uh, on the defensive end, much more so than I think they have in the past. But I still think that's because they know they got good presence. And you see Omar Watad fall asleep. And that was the other thing they were concerned about is Oladipo on Watad. Watad is not a defensive player. 17 for Oladipo. Count the basket and a foul. And it's on Cody Zeller. He's got nine steals. He was the third freshman in four years to get a double-double in his first game. Tom Pritchard and Christian Watford also did that. He had 16 points and 10 rebounds on Friday. And again, simply his presence making a difference for this Indiana team. They know they have him on the defensive end. They're learning what he can do offensively. What they do know, and the players will tell you this, they can throw him the ball, and they will throw him the ball, and they're not worried about him making mistakes with it. You know, when, it, when, it, when guys know that you can do something, they'll throw it to you. If they don't think you can do something, they won't throw it to you because they don't want to hear the coach getting after him. That is a good call, hand on the ball, but there's part of the hand, other arm, actually, that was there was contact, and it would have been fine, except he wasn't straight up. He was over the vertical plane of the offensive player. The third Zeller brother to win Mr. Basketball. All three won state championships at Washington High School. In fact, Cody on three state championship teams. His brother Luke played at Notre Dame, and his brother Tyler is a senior at North Carolina as Cody sits down. Derek Elston returns. So with a 21-point lead, Elston comes in. So you'll see now that Cody's set down, Cody Zeller is set down, you'll see what Indiana does in terms of defensively and offensively and whether Chattanooga can take advantage of the fact that they don't, they, there's not a presence in the center. Moore looks for Jones. Elston had a double-figure game Friday night. Ducks inside and scores. Oh, physical, too. See, two, two, two big bumps was able to not only withstand the, the first one, but he's, he created the second one and made the shot. Taylor goes around Etherington. Sheehy there contested the shot. And again, Indiana looks to run. Sheehy trails. And Jones walks. Traveling violation against Burdell Jones. 13-11 to play second half. A year ago, Indiana started 6-0, won 9 of its first 11, then lost 18 of its final 21, lost their last nine games. But again, 
as we watch shoot around today, you, you just know that this Indiana team has a lot more depth than they've had in Tom Green's first three years. Well, the Big Ten was, was a little better, I think, than people give it credit for one. Two, I, I think you've already noted the fact that there wasn't a lot of depth. So you lose, you use so much energy in the Big Ten. You use a lot of energy, not only just playing the game, but because it's a physical game. Uh, and Indiana was uh, didn't have necessarily the personnel they were hoping to be able to withstand that. Bell has returned for Chattanooga. And that is Rico White missing the shot. <laughs> Jamal Burroughs is looking at the official, and I, and I understand why. He jumped to get a rebound, and one of the Indiana players backed right under him. And the official, I mean, he's talking to Burroughs, but the official missed the call because because the guy back right under him. <laughs> Burroughs ended up on the floor. The one thing I like, though, is that the official has a chance to, to talk to the young man, and so... But what are you telling him when you missed the call? I, did you, I missed the call because he surely did. <laughs> I agree with you for the conversation. Sheehy's jump shot gets the extra roll. A 25-point Indiana lead at 56-31. This game turned at the end of the first half, an 11-0 run by Indiana to close the first half. It was 25-24 Hoosiers. Chattanooga did not score a field goal in the final 453. And until they hit a three early here in the second half by Ricky Taylor, it was 633 without a basket. Look at what, what Todd has to shoot in. Is there a the only one that makes me nervous is Tiny. I, I, I was looking. Tiny. Is there a uh, Kermit the Frog? Is there a Quinn Buckner? No, 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 no. There? No, this is the Kermit. Kermit the Frog. You know Kermit. That's the only one that would get me. Watch it. He'll see Kermit. Is that Kermit? I see uh, Sylvester Stallone. I also see Indiana Athletic Director Fred Glass. Oh, his. okay. He's he's made the ranks. Yeah. Okay. Special, special. <laughs> well, Todd has 13 points. He averaged 14 a year ago, the leading returning score for the Chattanooga Mox. Sheehy to the basket. Well, he's, I mean, he's been under so much more control. He hadn't played a whole lot today because they felt like he wasn't healthy enough, but he, he really has been under control and is probably, I think, the best athlete on Indiana's team. Jones has it raked away by early. There was nowhere to go. And the three-point shot missed by early. Yeah, that's <laughs> Well, that's the conversation. We, we talked to Jones. He's got a tough game on Tuesday night at Butler, a team that has been in the national championship game under Brad Stevens the last two years. Ten, never expected. Not that I necessarily thought we would, you know, would, would or would not win the NCAA championship, but we plan more for that. They run that play out of the timeout for Zeller. You take it from the sideline to the rim. How about that? That's Scott May and Coach Knight. That's a, whoa, that's a shirt. I mean, nice guy. <laughs> that's in Philadelphia after it's all done. And the question is, was it relief or what it was? It was a little bit of, it was a combination of everything. It, it had come together. Coach Knight got what he wanted, and we were able to get what we wanted, and we were able to move on. 32-0, the last unbeaten national champion. 1976, the first of three that Bob Knight won here at Indiana. Zeller hits the second. That's the charge for anybody who's in charge of the Indiana basketball program. That's been the standard. Tom Pritchard is in, and Burroughs picked up the loose ball. Well, this is an interesting combination, I think, that you're looking at with Pritchard in as well as you, you see Zeller's in the game as well. And all the people makes a tough basket, but my point was, uh, who do you put in the box uh, on, the, on the paint? Is Zeller or where does Pritchard go with all of that? So right now they've got Pritchard playing four and Zeller playing center. And don't be surprised if that changes over the course of the season. This is a career high night for Victor Oladipo. He has 21 points. 
He had 10 double-figure games a year ago as a freshman. Already has started with two. He had 16 on Friday night against Stony Brook. 21 here. Zeller the foul. Slovaric has a chance to earn two at the free throw line. Four fouls on Cody Zeller. Razan Slovaric, a native of Serbia, played his first couple of years at Georgia. Red-shirted a year ago. And he's got some savvy. I mean, because, as you know, with international players, they go right from high school, and they go into training for an opportunity potentially to play in professional basketball. He didn't do that. Instead, he came over here to the United States. But they get a lot of training uh, in terms of their basketball skills. Zeller sits down with four fouls as Elston is back. So four fouls for Cody Zeller as he talks to Tom Crean. Slovarich has seven. 63-36, Indiana. Just over eight minutes to play here in the second half at Assembly Hall. Hoosiers on the road at Evansville on Wednesday. Abel misses. But Todd has the rebound. Abel is the freshman out of Louisville, Kentucky, a Kentucky All-Star. Played at Eastern High School. Taylor beating to the basket and knocked out by Abel. Jordan Holes is back on the floor as Abel will leave. So the Indiana lineup of Ola Depot. Holes, Jones, Pritchard, and Derek Elston. John Schulman tonight has really searched for any combination for Chattanooga. Yeah, he really has. I mean, it, it's been a, it, it's really been a tough find for him because no one has really been able to knock down shots. And I think it's evident of that was that, no offense, but that play there. Yep, they're shooting 20. With Quinn Buckner, I'm Kristen Airy. Indiana has the ball. The Hoosiers head to Evansville on Wednesday. Quinn and I will be back here Saturday night when Savannah State is in. That's game two of this Hoosier Invitational. Indiana will also play Gardner, Webb, and Butler here in Bloomington as a part of that Hoosier Invitational. A nice drive by Verdell Jones. Jones has 11. He is the third Indiana player in double figures. Oladipo has 21. Holes has 15 on 5 of 8 from three-point range. Chattanooga is just 3 of 25 from the field in the second half before Watad scores there. And that's because I think Indiana speeded up the game a little bit. This is exactly what John Schumann didn't want. And they've been able to speed it up not so much on offense, but they've been able to speed it up on defense in terms of being able to force the tempo. Guys, you have to make decisions quicker, and execution has to be a lot faster, and sometimes that really throws guys off in the course of a game. Tom Crean has used 12 Hoosiers tonight as Elston missed it. That's Pritchard battling for the rebound. Coming into his senior year, Pritchard started 75 of his first 94 games as a freshman, sophomore, and junior, but his role has changed. And a holding foul. It's on Pritchard. One and one now for Chattanooga. Time for tonight's Reese's Perfect Combination. And that combination, yeah. we saw it earlier on the alley-oop from Holes to Oladipo. They have combined Quinn for 36 points. Yeah, there's no question. This has been a perfect combination. Uh, Oladipo has been really aggressive to getting as he has in game one. Not having the aggressiveness, I think, that... Uh, Tom Cream wanted from Jordy Hall, Jordan Halls. He's been much more aggressive in terms of not only looking for a shot, but letting it go. He had shots in the, in the game against Stony Brook wide open. Instead, he looked to pass and encourage both of those guys. Do what you do best. And uh, they both have been effective, and uh, that's a perfect combination. This free throw, but an offensive rebound for Chattanooga. Watad hit a couple of long threes and make it another one. And a foul on Sheehy, fourth three-pointer for Omar Watad, and has a chance for the four-point play. Well, he has range. I mean, he's very comfortable shooting this shot. I watched him before the game started, and, and I was watching who would shoot, you know, basically the most comfortable and the furthest away. You see, he still had form and got fouled on the way back, so he's got a great deal of confidence in his ability to make shots. 
Again, started his career at Georgetown. Played for John Thompson the third a couple of years, and a native of Johnson City, Tennessee, so came back to his home state. And now in his second year with the Mox. Sixteen to shoot. Oladipo attacks the rim. <laughs> And he, he makes a play after the, the after the foul is called. I th didn't think he had any chance. You know, guys go on one side of the rim and come to the other. He came clear to the other side after getting bumped out of bounds in the air. He's still able to get the control and get it on the back end. Well, the depot last year started just five times, averaged 18 minutes per game, seven and a half points, and now in games one and two, 16 on Friday night, working on a 21-point game here in game two. Less than six to play in Bloomington. The Hoosiers on their way to going 2-0 to start the season. Bell from three-point range. Mason, the rebound, blocked by Elston. And then kicked out of bounds by Sheehy. Yeah, he did. It got blocked by Mason. I mean, Mason's shot got blocked because Elston was in there battling. And Derek Elston feeling healthy for the first time in a couple of years. He's had knee surgery, stomach, a stomach ailment that Tom Green told us today he thinks he is finally now feeling better. Yeah, he's not only feeling better. I think the other thing, I mean, he's got to feel better, but the other thing, quite frankly, is that uh, he's probably playing a little bit more in position for where he needs to play. He was playing some center spot. I mean, he can play it, but he's more of a four, kind of a screen and pop four than he is a post center. That's all the depot holes for another three. Yeah. Keegan Bell is coming off Jordan Hall's. I don't know. I mean, I know you got a game where it's out of reach, but I'm not sure I do that one. Well, there's that Reese's combination. This time it was Oladipo finding holes, and now Mason steps out, and the former football player hits a three. She he left it short. And now another three-point shot. That's missed by. Rico White and will walk the other way. Free throws. Got to know where your shooters are. You see Oladipo, fortunate actually, because he was a little bit out of control, and Jordan Halls bails him out <laughs> and gives him a compliment for throwing him the ball. But Oladipo was very fortunate. But as you talked about, Halls has been looking for that shot, knocking it down. Oladipo just been active. Shot 41% a year ago, 41% for his career. We've not seen him at the free throw line yet this year, but he yeah. comes in with 41 straight. Yeah, but the conversation we had, I thought, was a poignant one with uh, Tom Cream. You, you can't go 35 for 35 in the conference and not have enough attempts to be the number one shooter in the league. So what they've tried to encourage him to do, now I don't know if he's going to do it, the Halls will do it, Halls will do it because it means he's got to get to the foul line. That was Oladipo out there. They know what Todd has great range. Well, that's, that was on the ground, so he, he wasn't getting a three-point shot. I mean, here's the pass. I mean, that's what happened. He tries to get back out, and he's just out of control. I mean, you've got to get there, but you got to do it under control. It was one of the things Indiana was practicing in their uh, shoot-around today was if you Recover back to your shooter. Recover under control. And that time, Oladipo was out of control. Well, Todd has been the bright spot tonight for Chattanooga. He has 20. And it started early on. He had 11 first half points. And he had a three early on that gave Chattanooga a 21 to 18 lead. Their last lead was 21 20. Indiana outscored the Mox 16 to 3 to close the first half. Hoosiers led by 12 at halftime, 36 24. And for the better part of this second half, it's been 20 or more. Oh, no, it, it, it's been a 20 point game almost regardless of the score. You can tell that by the way guys shoot. They'll, they'll take shots they don't normally take. Because they, you know, when you've got a 20 point lead, it's a lot easier to do it. That play you don't normally try to make. And make it he did. Burdell Jones has 13. 
Jones is a senior out of Champaign, Illinois. He is the fourth active scorer in the Big Ten. I saw the number one active scorer in the Big Ten, a senior out of Toledo in William Buford yep. in Ohio State on Friday night. Seventy-one to forty-seven. Indiana has a twenty-four point second half lead inside four to play. And you look to see now what, what does Indiana have to gain? Can they maintain their concentration with this bigger lead? That's a pushing foul on Chris Early. The turn of the leaves and Cody Zeller staying in Indiana to play his college basketball. He's back on the floor. He has four fouls. As for Dell Jones, shoots free throws. All Indiana in the second half. They won by 30 against Stony Brook on Friday night. They'll have a comfortable win tonight and then head to Evansville on Wednesday. Evansville with an overtime win yesterday in dramatic fashion against the Butler Bulldogs. And Tennessee Chattanooga will head to Hinkle Fieldhouse to see Brad Stevens and the Bulldogs Tuesday night in game two of the Hoosier Invitational. The one thing John Shulman said, Quinn, is you get a chance to play at Indiana, at Butler, and then they have two home games against Savannah State and Gardner-Webb. And he told me, when you're Chattanooga, it's hard to, to schedule non-conference home games. So a great opportunity for them to play two games at home as Savannah State and Gardner-Webb will visit Chattanooga. Yeah, you know that it can be difficult. So when you get a chance to play against teams, and then particularly teams of the caliber, you know, you've got a Big Ten team that you get a chance to go there, and you've got to take the chances with what you get. you get Butler, who's been... Uh, playing well the last couple of seasons. A little young, but you get those opportunities. You got to take it. Tonight's GMC professional grade player of the game is Victor Oladipo, the sophomore out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland, and DeMampa High School. A career high 21 points tonight, a couple of second half dunks, and 8 of 11 from the free throw line. Yeah, he, and he's, yeah, these two games have been indicated that he's come a long way with his game. This is not the strength of his game, knocking down the three. Uh, being aggressive to the hole is much more of what they'd like to see do. And if he gets around the rim, he can finish strong so you can't lose him. And his teammates know for it at the rim, if he's anywhere close, then he'll finish. Abel scored four points in his debut on Friday night, but this is the free throw. Indiana just 67% from the free throw line tonight. Coming up, Texas Pan American and Northwestern here on BTN as Oladipo sits down with 21 points. <laughs> you know me. LeVar is just, was messing with the student body who has the, when you foul out, you know, they do the left, right, and then you're about to sit down. So he goes over and stops and talks to the coach, which breaks the cage a little bit. He gets over where he's about to sit down, and he knows what's going to come next. So he acts as though he's going to sit down, and he stands up and then sits down, and then he waves to the student body. <laughs> you can't tell me he's not having fun. <laughs> Indiana by 24. That was Watad again with another three, his fifth. Seventy-four to fifty, two fifty-nine to play. Indiana was twelve and six here at the Assembly Hall, and the one issue that that Tom Green wants to solve is they did not win a road game yeah. a year ago. They did not win a game away from this building. They were 0 of 11 on the road and 0 of 0 and 3 in neutral games. Yeah, and that's that. That's one of those things that you have to deal with. One, as he continues to work to try to do what he needs to do from a personnel standpoint. But it, 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 that immaturity makes it really difficult to win on the road. And especially in the Big Ten. Oh. And nobody is having any sympathy for you. Austin Etherington has returned. He guards with Todd, who has the ball. Etherington, the freshman out of Cicero, Indiana, played his high school basketball in Hamilton Heights. That's Burroughs takes it inside. Etherington this calls that miss because he got his hand on the ball just as Burroughs was ready to take it up and get it on the rim. I mean, he did a nice job. I mean, he came out, of, out of, to help, so you come out of help position for that. 
Good look at Northwestern and Texas Pan American next, right after this. Eric Collins and Sean Morris on the call. And a personal foul as the game will slow down here in the final couple of minutes. And now Tom Green, who used 16 players on Friday night, will dig a little deeper into his bench. He'll bring in Corey Barnett and Jeff Howard, who are waiting at the scores table. Barnett out of Rochester.